Hey there, Ron Grand here. Look, I've been training for whew, 33 years now. I've been buying and selling houses for 40 years. And a question that I get about everywhere I go is, you know, what is subject to and what is a wraparound mortgage and how do they work together or not? So I'm going to answer that question right now on this short video. Let's start with what is subject to. Subject to simply means that a seller signs the deed to the house and signs a closing statement and then walks away. It means the loan will stay in their name and then they have no more relationship to the house other than that the loan is still in their name. When they sign the deed and hand it to you, hopefully you're gonna put it in a land trust. And if you don't know that, I got a lesson on here about that. Find it. Uh, you can also find it at my gold club, ronsgoldclub.com, and th th it'll be on there with many other lessons. So when the seller signs a deed and hands it to your attorney or to you, you own the house. Nobody can stop that seller from transferring ownership of that house. That debt does not have to be paid off when that house sells, unlike con conventional wisdom who thinks it has to be, because normally it is. Somebody goes out and gets a loan, pays off all the underlying debt, new loan is put against the property. That's not what we're doing here. Nobody's going to get a new loan. And you're not going to go personally guarantee this loan, or you're not going to apply for anything in the bank. There's no application. There's no credit check. There's nobody to tell you you cannot buy the house subject to the underlying debt. All The only permission you need is the seller's permission. All right? So buying subject to is a national phenomenon. It's probably the easiest way to buy a house is by taking over the debt. You don't have to go to the private lender or no place to get a loan. You just take over the existing debt. You agree to start making the seller payments, all right? Now, that's called buying subject to. And then there's buying on a wraparound mortgage. On a wraparound mortgage, it means that your attorney creates a new loan that wraps around on the underlying loan on the property. So, let me give you an example of that. If you're prone to it, you might want to take a screenshot of this or whatever. Get out your phone and take a picture of it. Because if you're new to this, you're going to have to study this a little bit to understand what a wrap is. It's called a wraparound mortgage or in a deed of trust state, it's a wraparound deed of trust. Or it could even be a land contract, land installment contract, contract for deed, agreement for deed, or any of those other terms that are used. Regardless of what document we're using, <clears throat> the new loan wraps around the underlying loan. Let's say you're buying a house and the ARV on it, which is the after repaired value, which means this is a house in good shape. And so the value of it today is $300,000. Let's say the seller has a loan on it for 275 and their payment is $1,680 a month, PITI, principal interest, taxes, and insurance. They, they tell you they'll sell it for what they owe which you'll hear quite often when you get your head in the game and start generating leads. In this case, this seller wants to get out of that debt way more than they care about that small equity they have in the property, which if they listed it with a real estate agent would be eaten up in commissions anyway. So they need debt relief or whatever reasons they might have Pretty good long list. They just want to get out. They want to get out fast. So you agree to buy their property. Now you have two choices. You can either buy it subject to, or you can buy it, with a wraparound mortgage or a wraparound deed of trust. I'll always take the wraparound mortgage. I live in a mortgage state, Florida. You may live in a deed of trust state. It makes no difference. It makes no difference which document is being used because both of them accomplish the same thing. So in my case, I'll have my attorney create a wraparound mortgage for $275,000 and it'll say right in the note that the payment on the 275 to the sellers, I'm creating this wraparound mortgage to the sellers. So my land trust will do a wraparound mortgage to the sellers for the amount they owe, 275. So I'll owe the sellers 275. The sellers will owe the bank 275. I'll make sure with the language I put in my contract that my principal and interest payment on this wrap to the seller will be the same as their underlying loan. So let me be clear. There's a $275,000 mortgage that wraps around this one, but the total debt on the property is still only 275. 
not 275 times two. So a wraparound mortgage means that my loan wraps around their loan, but there's only 275,000 total debt. And I always want my payment to equal their payment. So I do a wraparound mortgage or a wraparound deed of trust instead of subject to, in almost all cases, for very good reasons. In fact, let me put those reasons out here. You might want to take a photo shot of this as well. If I buy the house subject to, the seller is going to have a hard time qualifying for another loan if they want to go to the bank and get another loan because the loan is on their credit. It still shows that payment as an outgo. However, the seller doesn't have any income to wash out that debt. I don't owe the seller any money on a subject to deal. I'm paying directly to the bank. Seller's out of it. They have nothing left coming. So not only are they putting their credit in my hands, but they're also setting themselves up so they can't qualify for a loan because the debt ratio will take them out most of the time. If their income is not big enough to support the debt on the house they sold me, plus all of the new debt that they bring into their life, then they're not going to qualify. Now, unfortunately, they won't know that until that time comes. And frankly, no investor is going to tell them all about that. And that's the problem with subject to. The, the uh, person selling the house is just not properly educated on the ramifications of doing so. And they find out later, and there's really not much they can do about it, but just the same, that's probably not the way you want to run your business. Now, also, uh, if you don't pay, if I don't pay because I bought the house on subject two, there's nothing they can do. They can't foreclose. They have no instrument to foreclose on. I don't owe them any money on subject two. So they have no way to take the house back and protect their credit. This is why I don't like subject two. There's a couple of cases where I don't care. One, suppose the kids have inherited the house and the loan is in the parent's name. Well, obviously, I can't hurt the kids with a loan that's in the parent's name. So if the kids are okay with selling it subject to, I'm okay with it. Secondly, I suppose that the seller is just a mess. There's no way they're ever going to go apply for another loan to buy a house. Well, if they don't care, I don't care. I'll just take it subject to. Because <clears throat> now, if I buy it on a wrap, I can kind of fix those problems. When my attorney creates a wraparound mortgage, it will come with a note. They'll get recorded. And the seller has evidence that they're collecting enough money to wash out the debt on their underlying loan. So it's kind of a wash. Now, not every lender is going to approve that, uh, but most of them will, especially if they're seasoned for a while. So I have income, wash out my outgo. Unlike a rental, the lender's only going to give uh, them credit for 75% of a rent toward their debt. So actually, their debt would be bigger than their income on a rental. This is not a rental. They've sold it to me on a wrap. So they can probably qualify at another place. Don't ever guarantee a seller that they can because you don't know what a bank's going to do. Uh, but at least you know that they have the income and they can prove it. The only thing I do is show the, the bank the note. And secondly, if I don't pay, they can foreclose on me because I owe my land trust owes them the 275 in this case. So if I don't pay, they can foreclose and take the house back to protect their interest, which they cannot do on a subject to deal. Uh, so that's a, a down and dirty lesson on that subject. So if you want to... Um, learn more about how to properly buy houses, especially the terms houses, uh, there's a link below, which will take you to a 90 minute seminar that I do on the terms business step-by-step, step, which is how I buy most of my houses today, because that's where most of the wealth is in real estate. Uh, you're not, you're not going to get big checks, you get ongoing checks, get appreciation, depreciation, debt paid out, all the goodies that come with, with the real estate without having to go uh, rehab them and go to the bank and get a loan or any of that, not even private lenders in the world of terms. So click the link below. And if you have questions, you can go to um, ask, there it is, ask at ronlegrand.com, and I'll answer your questions uh, very quickly. And uh, you can uh, also go to ronlegrand.com, and there's a whole host of things on there uh, that you can get a lot of it for free.